Money looks good. Money knows me. Sure. Money feels safe with me. Money hasn't. Mo money, money, you just got introduced, I think. <laughs> money and I. You and money just connected on LinkedIn. Road dogs. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Just you and money soulmates. were drinking at a bar and you ran into each other in the bathroom and said to each other, oh my God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> but besties in sense. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Pull my number in your phone. And then you try to type it and the number's like 41 Q and like a <laughs> Batman emoji. Like what's going on here? Oh my God, this is my best friend. So you think I still have a bad relationship with money? I'm not saying that whatsoever. What are you saying? Welcome to Playing House, the podcast about keeping your relationship sexy and secure. I am the king of Instagram, Coulter Bouchard. <laughs> and I'm Dominique. And we're a real couple having real conversations, inviting you in as a third. On today's episode, Money Matters, joint finances versus separate accounts, budgeting as a couple, and does the breadwinner matter? But first, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Um, how's Wendy doing, by the way? How is Wendy? How's Wendy heard Williams in a while. doing? Shout out to everybody. Can't be doing well. Good morning to Wendy Williams. Why? Why don't you think she's? Doing I just well? saw. I saw some videos of her. Man, there was this one video, and she's like uh, at the supermarket, and she's like, she looks like shit, oh and my. she's like, like, hey, I don't, I don't like th this. Kind of sucks that like people are like, you know, all up in my grill and stuff. But I've been doing I, that to people for exactly, twenty five years, so I've I can't really it. be mad. I've seen it. <laughs> but that was from a while ago. I haven't. She went MIA for a minute. Yeah. Wow. Maybe she's still at the supermarket. <laughs> if you know where Wendy Williams is, please call the police. No, oh don't call the goodness. police. Don't call the police. Don't call the police. Call, is there a Mr. Wendy Williams? Or a Mrs. I Wendy think, Williams? I think she went through a divorce and it was pretty ugly, if I'm remembering. Call Wendy's mom. I don't know that. Anyway, I'm doing well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got a... A babysitter to watch Neil. Yes. Which... Yes, that deserves an air horn, baby. Wow. <laughs> started, started early with the air horn this episode. Yeah. Early. Okay. Hashtag cool. air horn army. I, I saw that. Yeah. Yes. I, <laughs> that's a <Hey>. thing now. <laughs> so having someone to watch her while we record this mm. really does lift a lot of anxiety. Yeah. I mean, when, it's one thing to meet a whole new babysitter. Get used to them. Feel comfortable with your child going with them. She took the car. She, and took your the car. Child. She took had, your she car. She had to take my, my car. Absolutely. Damn. Took the child. I know she ain't taking my car. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And then went to the library and she just sent me a photo. She's like, all is well. Happy at the library. And like Nia's hugging her and Nia already loves her. So that's awesome. It's, yeah. That makes me feel really good. Definitely haven't kidnapped your child. Yeah. LOL. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, not funny. Zooming into the background like that <laughs> is the library, right? Please have my child hold up a newspaper with today's <laughs> yes. date. Please also find a newspaper. <laughs> So, and we also went to um, the Chic Noir wedding show. That was awesome. Shout week. out to uh, our friend um, Camille. and just an all around baddie, Camille Wilson, who's like four nine. I don't know her height. Four, like, uh, like a human adult, like an adult woman. <laughs> a human no, adult, like, correct. and I'm sure she gets this all the time. You know, she looks young. <laughs> so when she's got some, like, you know, when she's got the thirst traps up, I'm like, I, I can't, I, I, I can't double tap this. I can't. I can't be doing it. I also see her as a little sister. Like, I've, I've known her since she was in, like, what, sixth, seventh grade. So seeing her as, like, a grown woman and doing her thing and traveling. And yeah. She just started a TikTok account, so follow her. I don't remember what it's called. It's like, Camille nice. Wilson, Mason. What a, what a great friend. She, What anyway, a great I, friend. Supportive. Follow her helping if you find out. her, please. But, yeah, she's doing big things. So yeah. she hosted... Well. <laughs> I mean, she's four nine, so how how big could the things be? But they're they're very large things. Yes, she's uh, <laughs> working on City Line right now, and she's doing uh, the the crowd, like the crowd hype person. What's like audience management? I, I like the audience hype person. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so she she does that and the bouncer. She, I don't think you're considered the your bouncer. bounce. You probably she probably gets to kick people out, and they give her a gun. I think. <laughs> Anyways, so she hosted the Chic Noir <laughs> wedding event, which is um, a wedding show. For black owned businesses, black owned vendors to come out and like meet newlyweds or I guess not newlyweds, but newly engaged couples. Um, and we went because we're going to renew our vows at our 10 hey. year. <laughs> yes, at our 10 year anniversary next year. Um, so also, I was the only white person there. Did you see any other whites? I saw in pictures. Oh, like the, like the whites. I, they probably were the there whites. earlier than us. Are you counting? Do you count the number of white people in the room? No, I now? just, I can tell when I'm the only one. 
right? I'm saying I spent my life having to count how many. You've never been the only are. white person in a room, okay? I have not. You I, don't I know my relate. struggle. I can't. Don't pretend you know what it's like. You do not know. <laughs> that is my story. What are you drinking, by the way? Uh, kiwi strawberry. Yeah. With a splash of fun. Okay. What's the fun? That doesn't matter. Right. It's my fun. Okay. My business. Yeah. And we don't want to get demonetized, exactly. right? Exactly. So just a splash or of Or deplatformed. What were some of the things you saw at the wedding show that you were like, oh, man, this is banging? Uh, so I've been planning this for a minute. I'm not going to lie. Um, like, I know what the theme's going to be. I know what the this guest This woman sent me, like, like, a, like, a Behance page, right? Like, you had mood boards and stuff. You I had sent like you Pinterest. I sent you Behance. Everything. I sent you LinkedIn accounts because I know the vendors already. I, I sent you portfolios. No, I know who my team's going to be. And it's going to be mostly black owned businesses. Your team. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? Like you should like incorporate. You should start an LLC. <laughs> and then who would be the CEO of this wedding? You? Me. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, you look like a CEO. I am a CEO. Yeah. So what 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 uh, role could I have? Can I? I'll start you're in the mail room. I don't know. I'll start in the mail room. I'm happy I to like, work my way out. Because you're not a very organized human. Okay. So I don't know what would become of my mail. Definitely set up this whole set. What up? <laughs> Shout out to the new set. How you got to admit it this is looks sick. sick. It is sexy. This I'm looks not sick. gonna lie. Hey. It, it, look, it looks really good. This looks amazing. Um, which if you're done, this brings me to my portion of the check-in. Oh no. <laughs> no, I got this let's, point. Let's get back. I tried to talk about the Sheikh Noir event. How let's many finish times? This part. <laughs> Just go ahead. The Tell thing us. I really liked about the uh the wedding show was the uh they had like people on stage speaking. And this one, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, like I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> They had people, they were on the stage, they had a microphone, kind of <laughs> like this. You know what it's like. They were standing. There was only one of them at a time. This one woman who was talking about um, content creation for, specifically for weddings, where like somebody shows up with a phone, like a professional Instagrammer mm. or a professional TikToker. So I thought that was like fascinating. Posting. Yeah, because like, think about it. Think of how big like wedding talk is yeah. and, and like content specifically for like the preparation, the journey towards going down the aisle. Yeah. Um, like it's a whole entire content franchise at this point. Is that is that a thing? It's like it's, it's a it's a content empire at sure. this point. So paying someone specifically to like live post for you, maybe even like I've seen weddings live on my feed while people are giving their vows. Um, so yeah, having someone who's dedicated to does that the, wedding. Does the priest say like or like whatever your religion is? I don't know. Are they like all right? This wedding brought to you by BetterHelp. If you're having trouble, and I think these two might oh my. use promo code <laughs> this wedding to save 10%. I don't know. Truly, I though. I've seen that. But yeah, they, they're entire, they're businesses now. Like yeah. weddings. Luckily, we missed all that when we got married. At City Hall. Yes. Yeah. And like, I think like that was just starting. Like people were just starting to share, mm. starting like wedding hashtags and stuff. Like that was what was happening in 2015. 2015. Yes. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> um, Nailed it. But like us renewing our vows in 2025, it's like it's a whole new, it's a whole new wave that we're, that we're joining in on this time around. Like, I don't want to make it a whole, like, yeah, you use do. hashtag. Okay. Yeah, listen, you do. Listen to what I want to do. I want to make it us. Like, I want to make sure that it's still our personality, that like there's a theme to it, that we're fun, that people are coming and they feel like they're chilling with Dom and Coulter. I don't want them to feel like, oh, yeah, I got a life post this or or like, oh, this was obviously sponsored by this person. Because like, you know, when you go to events and you you feel like that. Yeah. Like, I don't want people selling stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to feel sold to or I want my attendees to feel sold no, to. No, but like, you know, we'll, we'll toss in a big like Grey Goose sign or like uh, still working on Puma, still trying to make Puma happen or Roots or Lululemon. I own I sweatpants from all of them. Can I say not Lulu? Why not? They're in some hot water. Okay. So. I'm going to cut that out or beep it or maybe just leave it in and I'll leave this explainer in there as well. <laughs> okay, I, good I plan. want the money. <laughs> I'd like the money, please. I'd like money. I'm ignorant to this and I would like the money, please. Thank you. You're not ignorant anymore, are you? No, I'm, I'm w- willfully ignorant. ignorant. Okay, I'm cool, cool, leaning cool. into my ignorance. Yeah, so, so you're yeah, excited really, about really that. Really dope about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, really dope about that. Really dope. Really <laughs> excited about that. And I think you should hire me to do that for our wedding. So how are you going to be the groom? And anyways, I don't what? know. Say that to my 150,000 Instagram followers. <sighs> hey, that's huge, that's, dude. That's what? Congratulations. I picked up like 50,000 in a week. That's, that's, that's nuts. Nice. Do you want to share any tips here? No. Okay. <laughs> We're gatekeeping. We're girl bossing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gaslight girl boss gatekeep. All right. You can pay me for that. <laughs> Truly though. I'll, I'll, I'll consult. Is it something that you're considering? 
Yeah, I mean, I've done it in the past. I'll yeah, do it again. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I think you yeah. should. I think you absolutely should. It's worth my time. And if you're hot enough, okay. no fugglies, no fuggaroos. Wow. Yeah. It's an uphill battle. You look like garbage. People don't want to see that on the internet. Oh my God. Unless like, unless like you really look like garbage. It can't be just like, oh, eh. it has to be like, oh my God. Some of those accounts, nuts. The, the numbers these people are doing, good for them. I'm not going to describe anything in particular because uh, I'd like to retain plausible deniability, but there's some, uh, you know, there's some folks. I think there's still people, but. That's terrible. You know. I'm not supporting this. Yeah. I do not support this. I want to make that very clear. For legal reasons, uh, all of this is just a, just a bunch of little jokes, just a bunch uh, of little yeah, make yeah, ups yeah. But 150000 on Instagram, that's huge. You've worked really hard. Yeah, because it's uh, it's been huge with like TikTok's been great and uh, Instagram's catching up. So that's good. So we got to get the YouTube subscribers up. Come on. You comment, guys, like. He's knocking down the door trying Let's to represent go. you, don't you? That is definitely some shade. That like, is definitely some shade I'm from saying, Dominique. i just there's interest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm interested yeah. in the interest, but absolutely. Just shovel money into our front door. Which brings us to the theme of this episode. Hey. Hey, love, hey. A, love a good segue. Okay, so we're wearing, I'm wearing green at least. You set up a green. There's a green light behind absolutely. us. Absolutely. And uh, that goes with our theme, which is money matters, a.k.a. cash money. Cash money. What is that? Like a commercial? Okay. Anyway, so we're talking about um, <laughs> money matters, specifically how they relate to What song was that? You don't know? Okay. That's okay. It doesn't sound like it is. It sounds like you're pretty I, I'm, pressed. I'm incredibly disappointed, but also not. What else not is surprised. new? surprised. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about money matters. Um, when I think about, so we're getting into the theme, the, the segments, family matters, and how cash money relates to family matters so like when we first moved in together and we've touched on this a couple of times there was the discussion of do we combine our finances um though we were we both made that mistake <laughs> how are we both more in debt together than we were well, individually we were both how did that happen students like we moved in together in our final year of university um and then it was just a matter of like we just need a checking account, which what is that called in the states? Is it the same thing? Is it still checking? I think sometimes it's called a current account. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or well. maybe checking. I don't know, but it's spelled with a C K instead of a Q. Q. Ha. Why? I don't. I, why? Why does Canada anything? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> really? We're adding like <laughs> U's to words. G's and, and H's. Like right. Just... <laughs> like what? What? Sometimes it's French. Sometimes it's English. From yeah, the like UK. It ends with an R E instead of an E R, ER, like center and Sante. meter. Yeah, I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make it one thing. But I'll say this: when I was in the states and I saw like a sign that said center and it was spelled E R, I was like, this just feels wrong. It did feel wrong, but yeah. I feel like after a while, we all have to agree. Maybe, maybe a, a American spelling. They give up a few and they won't because it's America. Yeah. <laughs> and Canada, we give up a few and instead we'll just give up everything because we're Canada. But, you know, we're having fun. We need to agree on a measurement system. Like, I, uh, I, can't, I can't do this. The whole world has, except for two countries. You know, two countries use the imperial system, the United States and the uh, the the absolutely dominating economy of Liberia. Wow. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. There's just the two of them. Well, we also need to agree on getting rid of daylight saving time. Yeah. Like just have one, just have the same time zone all year. It's, but it's big, it's big uh, clock. That's it's big clock. It's big <laughs> clock. We all know it. Don't pretend like it's not happening. Big clock has been lobbying governments they for years. Big Ben, big clock. No, that's just one. That's, that's big just Ben's one, one of the them. big clocks. He's the CEO oh, of my. big clock. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, getting all the Being tea. the biggest clock, right? Probably. So uh, I, I don't think it'll ever happen. Because you'd have to have so many governments agree on this. Yeah, so that I think that actually happen. relates to our theme and that like a lot of people are saying they would never shift time zones to get rid of daylight savings time because we, we want to be connected with New York where um, the stock exchange is hosted and then you'd have to like, there's just too much hoops you'd have to jump through. Even though it has, there's have been studies that show it causes so much more issues. Yeah. It causes depression. You lose so much I mean, hello, hello, it's called daylight savings yeah. time, right? Meanwhile, I'm losing my mind. Am I right? Hey. So uh, what if we just took off daylight saving day? 
Because, like, it's the Sunday, but the Monday you're still a little messed up. What if we took off? I'm just going to take off the Monday now. Two okay. Mondays a year. Done. That doesn't impact the entire winter ahead of you, does it? No, but, like, that one day where, like, you're kind of like, oh, God, is it eight or is it nine? Oh. That lasts for weeks. I feel like it's kind of like a day. It's like jet lag. They say uh, for every hour of time difference, you're going to be jet lagged for a day. Really? So, like, three hours. How about a quiz? You ready for this? No. You ready? I don't want to do this. Okay, here's the quiz. All right, number one. What the hell is that? Number happening? one. Are you ready? No, are you ready? I said I don't want to do this. Okay, number one. Probably a little too hot. Um, okay, so if there was a three hour time difference, how many days of jet lag? Three. Okay, good job. Is there a number two? Yeah. You have. <laughs> get ready for this one. Okay. What if you have uh, three and a half hours? Of time difference. How many days is it going to take you? Three and a half. The answer is four, actually, because you round up. Ugh. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. Do you remember the theme of the show? Money Matters? Okay. Do so, you remember what I was talking about? No. See, exactly. No. I swear to God, you have a word quota that you need to meet every single day. And it's an aspirational one. Like, it's it's super high up there. Yeah, I'm an overachiever. I was in the gifted program. No, you weren't. Yes, and I've spoken to your entire family about this, and everybody said My that did not happen. My family is a pack of liars. Okay, so. everybody else is the, is a liar. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's... It was called enrichment. <laughs> like like the flower, so... Like the flower? Like the F-L-O-U-R. You know, you get like so money enrich, matters. We moved in together flower. and... Decided, yeah, we're gonna need a joint checking account to at least pay off our rent. Mm. Um, because I don't think we had any joint bills at the time. Our hydro. Do we pay utilities? We did, and the funny thing is, I was in charge of it. Um, so it didn't actually get paid. Yeah. Um, because I completely forgot I was supposed to pay hydro. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, I guess, in the states, is utilities. Um, and we had a person show up at the at the apartment door and he's like and he spoke as loudly as possible to like with the purpose of embarrassing me and he's like i need you to pay this or i'm here to cut it off and i'm like can you keep your voice down he's like listen i know it's embarrassing and then he looked around and then he started yelling louder in, in order to emphasize the point did you like, did you kick him in the balls well no because that's because you couldn't find illegal. them right and he's standing in front of me what do you mean i couldn't i couldn't find them yeah uh -huh. um so yes <laughs> that was the beginning of my adult my adulting, I guess, realizing that, like, you got bills and you got to pay them on time. On you time. you don't. Every month. It's not somebody else's credit. Like, you're not on your parents' account yeah. anymore. Um, and wish like, that it, I was. Good Lord. Wish, so that, like wish that mom and dad were paying my... Dude, we're 32. I know people that are our age. Mom and dad are still paying the cell phone bill. And I'm not even angry. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm like, can your, can your yeah. mom and dad pay my cell phone bill? Truly. How do we get on, like, Susan and Richard's, you know? Who are they? Uh, this person's parents, I okay. guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, do you remember what that was like in like the beginning of our? Yeah, and we also split it up. We tried to be like equitable with it. We split it up because I made more money than you at the time, which was probably like two grand a year or something. And <laughs> so I, how did it work? I paid like a larger portion of the rent, or I maybe think if it was like it was like. 60 40 rent split versus Maybe 50 50. I paid the rent and that was like my only bill. And you took care of groceries and, well, supposed to take care of utilities, but. No, it was a 60 40 split. Okay. Because I still paid rent. Right. Um, But yeah, it was it was messy as hell. And I mm. remember it, like I had a, a binder. I, I started a finance binder. Yeah. Where I'd like check, okay, this is when this bill is due. This is when I should pay it so that it's not considered overdue. Keyword like that should. Day. Yeah. Yeah. But I, so you mentioned this, like there was a point where I was, where you were making more than me. There's been a point where I've been making more than you. We go back and forth when it comes to like actual. Which is awesome. Income. I love the leapfrog because yeah. there's so many dudes, specifically dudes that are like, they feel like th what they earn is like their entire like self-worth. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of dudes are like, a lot of dudes get, get like. Not maybe not a maybe maybe offended when their female partners make more money than them because I think for a lot of guys they like I said they make that their entire personality and so if your partner then makes as much as you do or more 
then you've got to like help out around the house a little exactly. bit more. You should be doing that anyway. But like you feel like, oh, I've got to like, I've got to do these other things now. Mm-hmm. You become resentful because you're like, I don't want to have to bring the rest of myself to the table. Exactly. I'm good coming home and like, th- you know, throwing my do- dirty shoes in the corner or whatever and like plopping my ass on the couch. I put them on the mat. Interest. When? I think you have three pairs of shoes right in front of the door right at this moment. No. You clean them up earlier. Right. My point is, <laughs> my point is like, it doesn't need to be, it it doesn't need to be a, a, like competition in a negative sense. And in fact, if you've got joint finances and one of you makes more money than the, like, that's more money for you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And Gina and Drew touched on this in our previous episode and they have multiple businesses together individually, what have you. Um, and I think like it's super dope and it was inspiring to me, like having them mentioning like they, the, the, the leap frog that, yeah. they, that they do where they like inspire each other and like always try to one up each other's finances. Mm-hmm. Um, that's great. I think like you and I used to have kind of a toxic way of going about that. Or at least maybe I was just toxic. You definitely it. did. I. You'd be like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then you'd be like kind of pissed off that day because you'd have to come up with a way to make more money than me then. No, it wasn't even that. It, was, it just felt it was like a little bit that. Like if I was making, let's say I was making fifty k, right? You would ask for fifty five. But like at my next job, yes. And then or, get, no, and then get denied no, for it. Probably actually, you would get pissed off when you'd hear that's how much I'm making because you'd be like, "Oh, what the hell? Why am I making so little then?" Not not like, "Oh yeah, you are a skilled person. You should be making yeah, this much." It'd I mean, be like, also so why that. the hell aren't I making more than you? And then you'd just make sure that you just leapfrog me, not because like. Oh, this is a friendly competition, but obviously I got to be above her. <laughs> like, so then, yeah, it would piss me off. I'm taller than you. I'm bigger than you. I need more money. What's that got to do with what we do? I need more food. I need uh, more soap for my body's bigger. I need more of that three in one, right? For my face and my hair and my body. So three in one. Yeah. Soap, shampoo, and conditioner, baby. I think it was Drew who was saying he he's used a four in one. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out what the fourth one was. Sure. He's putting the wild and wilders, I'll tell you that. No, like Gina has him under <laughs> matters now. Like that's not what he's using. But he said before he met her, he was using four. And I'm trying to figure out what the fourth one was. I used to use a bar of like whatever the cheapest, like Irish spring in your or hair, zest. On your face. Not in my hair. I've always used shampoo and conditioner. No. But like, yes. And you've yes. used a two in one. I've used two in one before, but like hair specific products. I'm not using a bar of soap in my hair. What? Nah, you know what? That's a lie. When I had a buzz I know, cut, it's a I would lie, use a, I would use a loofah. I know. Just, with the body wash. But the soap, I don't know if you knew this, really dries out your skin. Yeah. But it's cheap and in the spirit of like money mattering, I wanted to that's, save some don't, of it. Don't so bring the no. You know? That's don't don't make connections where they don't exist. Let's use a, a a body oil, like a, a washing oil, mm. cleansing. How do you use the? I use the oil to cleanse my face before I like use the yeah, face cleanser. Yeah, because you double cleanse. I don't, but I don't want. I gotta cleanse my. I gotta double cleanse my body now. No, it's now. moisturizing and it's washing. It's is, is this instead of a body wash? And yeah. Like oh, okay, then I can do yeah. that. I'm not doing two body <laughs> okay. washes. No, no, no. Dear it's God not, forbid you should not, thoroughly cleanse and shower twice care a day. For your skin. I got a. I have lots of skin. Yeah, I hope. I gotta, so then I would be washing it four times, right? In a day. Okay. I'm good with the twice. That's it. Even twice is like, that's a little much sometimes. So. Does the breadwinner matter? Like, in what sense? Like, I'm trying to come up with a way that, that does the breadwinner matter? I think it comes down to equity, right? Like, if there's a giant mismatch, like, let's say one of us made a million dollars a year and the other one made $50,000 a year. Um, I feel like maybe the person making $50,000 a year should like get some mentorship from the person. <laughs> making, <laughs> should be like, Hey, can get you, can you maybe, can you maybe negotiate my next contract? Can you <laughs> hire me? Do you need an assistant? No, I don't think it matters. I think that a lot of people weaponize Okay. if they're the primary breadwinner primary if they make more money than the other person i think sure. that's weaponized sometimes but also what's the context right are, are you making less money than the primary breadwinner because you're also working part-time because you're also taking care of the kids a little bit more because you're also like managing more of the fi- family's finances mm-hmm. which again maybe hand that over to the person making a mill but oh i don't i don't know maybe Just because you can make a lot of money doesn't mean you can handle a lot and manage a lot of money that's true right 
Um, I think it comes down to financial compatibility. And, oh, oh, I think it comes down to financial compatibility. And for a very long time, you and I were not financially compatible. I don't think we're compatible with finances. Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> oh, here we go. No, here's the thing. Because he, he's been pointing out this beautiful set around us, right? And so my thing is, okay, I'm going to bring it back to my church upbringing as I always do. Right. Because I believe that God is my source. At sure. the end of the day, like as someone who God give you that kid? Poor, God give you this set? Huh? At the I end of the so. day, yes. So as someone who grew up broke, okay, like I knew what it was to go to school in the middle of winter in Canada with no jacket because we could not afford one. Um, I wore like, I, I went to Walmart sometimes. Oh, wow. What's your point? Are you trying to compare that to my upbringing? Yeah, like it just wasn't. Are you wasn't, really trying? Like sometimes we wore George, right? So I really hope I'm not joking. minimizing. Yeah, you are. Uh, and also like my mom never would have sent us to school in George, but anyways. Um, <laughs> so I know I've, I've seen what the bottom has looked like for me at least. And I know that that's something that I will bust my ass through my mom's help. She's established. So she's gotten us to a point where like your mom I, immigrated I, here. I can, exactly where I can thrive. Like she had to make a lot of, she made a lot of sacrifices so that I can be at the point where I'm at, where I can make financial decisions that she, there weren't choices for her that she just had to make. Right. So because of all of that, I can now have the privilege of being able to like make choices, research, connect, network, like, Ha decide do I want to take on this client or not versus mm. my mom was like okay so I'm gonna I worked nine to five now I'm gonna work this night shift now I'm gonna work this, this weekend exhausting. shift like she had Tough all types of jobs and this is like even when I was a baby she was mm. doing that right so that's why I truly believe at the end of the day if I get like someone can fire me for example please don't I can, I no, can, no nobody can fire Dominique I can lose a client like at the end of the day, God is my source. Like you and I, God forbid, we should separate, for example. I don't want that. But at the end of the day, God is my source. Thank, I know thank, where my finances come from. I know where from where my money comes at the end of the day. Like I have that. I let faith drive my stuff. So and I'm not like faith without works is dead. So I do also try to like make the, the right decision. And, 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 and you know, like it, it's all based on research. So when you say to me, Dom, I want to invest X amount of dollars into like a set because I believe in our podcast and I want this to blow up. And with a beautiful set, we will have more opportunity, for example, or like have the quality that we're looking for. I'm not going to question you. I'm not going to push back. Thank and, God. Right. That's that's one thing I'll thank God for. But that comes back to our financial compatibility. Right. Because it's, it's not always the same when it's with me when I'm like, I want to invest in certain things because I think that that having quality here is going to get us to get me to a, a specific goal that I'm reaching for. Can I think of a, a specific example right now? Um, videography was my huge hobby before it was your huge hobby. Right. And so I used to invest in a lot of like camera stuff. Like you would buy me like camera gear for Christmas yeah. and holidays and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't always on the same page. Like it was like, I think like this is the right investment now because this what works for my budget at the time. It wouldn't have be, been as acceptable if I freely did that without your input. Do you know what I mean? Sure. hundred percent. Yeah. So we weren't always like that. And I think we're finally at the point where and it comes with like, it comes with age, I think. And like being able to like have a savings account, though it's not at all where we want it to be. Um, but it comes with privilege over time where we can now say, yeah, let's invest in the areas that we're looking to. You look concerned. Yeah, I, I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> what are you asking for, Dominique? Well, Brandon Blackwood is coming out with a Valentine's Day collection. Listen, you leave Brandon Blackwood to me. I I, th I think it'll be fine. Y'all heard that? Can I get an air horn? That that like that deserves. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Say that was sexy. Say that again. Say what again? I got that. Leave Brandon Blackwood to me. I got that. Leave Brandon Blackwood to me. I got it. Okay. Yeah. All right, daddy. <laughs> you're great. You're great. And also, you're very green. You look great in green. Money. You look great in everything. But... Money looks good. Money knows me. Sure. Money feels safe with me. Money hasn't. Mo money, money, you just got introduced, I think. <laughs> Money and I. You and Money just connected on LinkedIn. Road dogs. Yeah. 
time. Yeah. Just you and Money soulmates. were drinking at a bar and you ran into each other in the bathroom and said to each other, Oh my god, you're so beautiful. <laughs> but besties and You're so beautiful. <laughs> Pull my number in your phone. And then you try to type it and the number's like four one Q and like a <laughs> Batman emoji. Like, what's going on here? Oh my god, this is my best friend. So you think I still have a bad relationship with money? I'm not saying that whatsoever. What are you saying? I'm saying you're great and I love you and uh, let's make lots of money this year. Truly. Like pillow talk. Sorry, let me let me say it like this again. I got you. Okay, when I go back to the question, does the breadwinner matter? I will say this. I find you can't it even look hot. at me right now. I can find you? it. I like the idea of being a kept woman. Me too. Taken care of. I want to be. I want to be taken care of. Take care of me. But like, have I not been in the role where I've been the breadwinner? As in, like, you make more money than me. Like sure. Last year, I was the breadwinner. Or maybe mm. 2022, I was the breadwinner. Yeah. 2023, you were the breadwinner. Hey, leapfrog. Right? Exactly. So, but like to me, that's hot. Like hearing like, oh, that's what you want for Valentine's Day? I got you. Yeah. Like that, that's hot to me. Like if, yeah. if you tell me like, that's where you want to go for vacation? I got you. I'll fly you out. Like that. that Oshawa, I, Ontario. Yeah, okay. that's where you, Hamilton, Ontario. But for Hold a very on. long. <laughs> Windsor, Ontario. I'll take you there. Okay. For a long time, it felt like. Um, I was a Scrooge, hundred percent. What do you mean? Just like a scarcity mindset. Scarce. Well, we both had that, yes. And I think like sickness comes into that. Like, ex explain your scarcity mi mindset because you need to give yourself more credit than that. I mean, even before cancer. Okay. I mean, like us in college and like not making a ton of money, and then like, you know, radio in the very beginning does not pay very well. Mm. We were in Dawson Creek, which oh, what's the opposite of an air horn? We've spoken about <laughs> Dawson. You have a blue button, right? Okay. I hate that place so much. And I made like no, I made like 29 grand a year or something like that. Like no money. And I had to bartend at night. Like my relationship with money has always been, um, my relationship with money, I've always been good at hustling. And I've always been good at like, I want to do the thing that I want to do, even if it doesn't like generate me Tunnel a ton of money vision. from that, but it will one day. And I know that it'll bear fruit one day. And, uh, you have faith in God. I have faith in myself only. And sometimes also I don't have faith in myself. So there's that. And I'll like hustle outside of that to make ends meet, not even to make ends meet, outside but like what? outside of my main job, I'll Absolutely. like, I'll get yeah. the second job. I'll get the third job. And I'll wait tables. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, done with that. Mm -hmm. I don't like, do you know what I mean? No, you're not. I want to, well, I'm done with like hustle mentality. I think you're more intentional mm, rather than. Yes. And so like, if I'm doing a few other things, I want it to be like, I want, I want to, I want those things to be aligned with my passion. Okay. And also like, I've been doing this a long time at this point. I've been doing this a decade. I know what Which I'm doing. Which actually is not a long time. When it's you really not a long think time, but after a decade, uh, there's that um, book by Malcolm Gladwell, The Tipping Point, and he didn't invent the 10,000 hour rule, but he talks about it in this book and, and I think repopularized it. You do something for 10,000 hours, which is roughly 10 years worth of like committed, intentional time doing something, you're then considered an expert. And here at the 10 year mark, like I, we talked about this at the beginning of the episode. And yeah, like having a ton of followers on Instagram isn't like, okay, you've done it. Congratulations, you're yeah. successful. But that, much like a big following on TikTok, much like, um, some of the meetings I've been having in the last, uh, like even in the last couple of weeks have, have been really validating. And I think there's that other expression and an overnight success, 10 years in the making. Mm. And I feel like, ah, oh, like, here we go. Yeah, yeah. I've been putting in the work. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a terrific back catalog of content. I got great ideas and I can like, I can, I can command attention. I think you touched on a really important point that I did. I'm touching on a really important point right now. I don't know if it's cut out of frame, but I'm, uh, these calves, man. <sighs> yeah, it is cut out of frame. Um, <laughs> but ooh, it's been, um, a trending conversation. So I'm going to cross put your legs up again. on my, put your legs up on my lap if you want. But like where are my feet going to go for free, for free for a second. <laughs> There's been a trending conversation, especially like with the beginning of the year and people 
you know, having new goals to like really take their content seriously, become full time content creators, for sure. example, or just like go really hard for themselves online, mm. sharing their stories, which is amazing. But a lot of stories have come out about like just because you go viral, just because you hit a million or how many millions of views. People quit their jobs and it's like, what are you going to do for money? No, but it, it like views, virality, followers do not necessarily equal cash. Right. So it's that intentionality behind it. And I've like seen a, especially a lot of like full time creators sharing their stories of like, mm. you know, I didn't even have to go viral. I didn't have to wait until like I had the huge following to start generating mm -hmm. a consistent income. Because really, at the end of the day, it's not just the hustle that you have, but it's the intentionality. It's like mm. I have a very clear goal and that's what I'm working towards. So you mentioning like you're starting to have these conversations, you're starting to like be cons you've been consistent online, but like, you know business is picking up for you like it's it's important i think for people who have those goals as well or like maybe don't have those goals but like are curious about the other side sure. of content creation to hear that that like just because yeah you got millions of views yeah. but does that mean that when that started you mil immediately had millions of dollars it's engagement it's i for the record i also don't have millions of dollars right now yet but yes. the year is young right it's january Absolutely. but the more that i talk about what has worked for me and the more that I talk about why I love doing what I do to, I spoke to a, I spoke to a class, um, yesterday, a university class yesterday, and it was a broadcasting class and they wanted me to talk about the connection between broadcasting and social media and how one can work for the other and how they've kind of like blended over the years and not just radio, but broadcasting in general. And it felt really good to be talking to, I think like there were like maybe a hundred students and they had really engaging questions and it just felt good to like, number one, be recognized for being an expert in my field, um, a little more in radio, to be honest, but, and also to be able to give like nuanced answers to these questions. And the more that I speak to people, the more that I, uh, and you can always hop in the DMs. Anytime somebody asks for advice or wants help or I collaborate with people or I work with brands, explaining what I do reminds me that I'm good at doing it, mm -hmm. reminds me what I'm doing and also is incredibly, I'm going to say inspiring, but I don't mean for like other people necessarily. I mean like for, for myself. yourself. Why not inspire your damn self? It's great when I'm explaining a concept to somebody that'll like, that'll, that'll, create five more ideas for me. Mm, right. Yeah, yeah. I go like, how about this? And then my brain's already thinking like, what if you did this? What if you did this? And Amazing. so that's really cool as well. Amazing. I'm I feel really, I feel really good about this. Yeah. Good. And good. there's a lot of stress. Uh, there's a lot of stress out outside of that and outside of like being a husband and outside of being a father. There's just like, there's a lot of, it's been a stressful few years, like a really stressful few years. And I, you know, like I had cancer and, and I'm just, I'm, I want to be intentional with my time and I want to, I want to make sure that I'm never like dreading getting out of bed in the morning mm. that I'm never like, Oh, that, that chest pain from anxiety is back. Right. Right? right. Or that chest pain from anxiety has been there for days or weeks now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I went to the hospital, uh, I guess a year and a half ago now. And I thought I was maybe having a heart attack. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And it turned out to be anxiety mm -hmm. and stress and just like the cumulative, like of a bunch of different things. I was at work when it happened and like, it was scary. It was scary. And I feel like some of the changes I made after that, I've, Maybe not, maybe like I haven't even backslid, but some of the things that I hoped would change didn't. And I'm at this period in my life now where I go, I'm 32 years old. I shouldn't be having chest pain even once in a while. Do you know what I mean? I shouldn't think like, that's not fair. Yeah. So it's kind of where I'm at, but I'm looking forward to like really kind of getting to like know myself all over again this year. Right? Like I'm really, really excited to do that this year. Last year was a year of, um, I did a lot of repair mm. and what did that look like? I mean that, and I've talked about this on the show before, like getting my hormones in check, uh, getting tested for ADHD, taking medication for ADHD, going to therapy more, working out three, four days a week, like 
2023 was good for me in that respect. And even with all those changes, I still, with like one area of my life in particular, I, I still have like this acute stress. Mm. This one area of my life is generating a lot of stress. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. the goal for this year is to just, the goal for this year is to not just like get rid of stress. You can never truly do that. And like stress can also be healthy. It can be a motivator. I want to replace bad stress with good stress. Okay. Okay. Like exciting. I think like there's, there's stress, like there's being stressed out about something, but like on my wedding day, I was, or like the day I gave birth, I wasn't stressed, Mm. but I was anxious. Mm -hmm. It was like a good, excited. I don't know what's happening. I, I have a lot of anticipation, but it's positive. Yeah. 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 This is me giving birth. I finally know what it's like to give birth. This is great. <sighs> Fellas, it's that easy. Um, <laughs> I think you touching on the stress of it is really important because like even in our last episode when speaking with Gina and Drew, Gina mentioned like when you make more money, it doesn't make things easier. And during the episode, I was like, yeah, that's true. Because it, it, yeah, more money. I mean, at least P. Diddy said more money, more problems. But isn't isn't like I don't think we're talking about that dude right now. Right. Yikes. So, oof. Well, bad boy said. Mace said, how many more problems? Careful. We're going to have to Google people before, not even before the episode because things change so quickly. Anytime you want to reference a celebrity, uh, just like give a quick goog, you know, quick goog. I would say more money, fewer inconveniences. Um, You got all the money in the world. You're not like, you're not pressed about paying 50 bucks to park at, like at the venue. No, but that's what I was going to get at, right? So like, yes, you, you know, when you have more money and you don't know how to manage it, this it, your problems are not solved. Mm. Like you're kind of just creating more, giving yourself wider rage to create issues for yourself. If you don't know how to manage little, yeah. you can't manage much, right? And so again, like referring back to my childhood, coming from very little financially, like, yeah, life is easier in terms of, like, it feels good to put bills on auto pay. That feels good. That lessens stress. That doesn't necessarily lessen stress in terms of, like, health issues. Mm. Although, like, you like you touched upon, being able to heal um, your, yourself last year and invest in things, a lot of that was a privilege through money. 100%. Like, in Canada or, like, with your job, for example, you have great mental health benefits. Yeah. Not everybody has that. Being able to get hormone treatment and like mm. even like the 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 I testing pay out of pocket necessary for, for that. that. That's like a thousand right? bucks a year. You touched on a third thing, um, ADHD. Wasn't mm. that out of pocket too? No, that was also covered by by uh, benefits and the prescription. Like the prescription's expensive. That's mostly covered by benefits. But again, like even if even if you have benefits but can't afford the copay, for instance, you're screwed, right? See? Or if you have no benefits, if you lose your job, yeah. Um, if you want to like start a, a creative venture or you want to start mm-hmm. a business, for instance, losing your workplace benefits can be an impediment to that. Absolutely. A lot of people are, and and like you can say it's scarcity mindset, um, but you can also say like it's the reality. It's reality at the if end of the day. If you've like, got like a thousand dollars worth of prescription medications you take a month yeah. and like that seems like a cartoonish number, it's not for a lot of people, you can't afford, you just, you can't afford to pay for that out of pocket. You mm-hmm. need those benefits. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, like, more money, more problems, but, like, <laughs> let's be honest, less money, tons of freaking yeah. problems at the end of the day. <sighs> I appreciate you touching on that. <clears throat> a you lot appreciate of people, me touching on this, too? A lot of people hey. ask about, um, sometimes I get DMs, I should say, asking about, like, my career, what that, has that is. You were going to say asking for money. <laughs> no, nobody does that. Asking what my career journey has looked like. Um, so I specifically, I work in um, marketing, brand marketing, or specifically in partnerships. So um, where I'm working right now, I work with creators to help them, like, with monetizing their pro- platforms, getting um, paid UGC opportunities, UGC user-generated, user-generated content. content. Um, Coulter and I went to the same university, so, you know, we studied broadcast, but by the time I graduated... Um, TV is what I specialized in. It had moved online. That was when, like, YouTube... Now this is TV. Right? That was when, like, YouTube was just starting to monetize channels. Mm. And Netflix, I think, just came to Canada. Um, We're going to... You're going to cut the cord, they said. Just get one subscription, and that's all the TV you'll ever need. (laughs) And now it's $300 a month for everything. 
And so with that, that change from broadcast to digital, I like my, my career, my, what I thought my career would, would have been from what I studied to what it had become after graduation had shifted as well. Um, so I've worked in, in a lot of different roles from like SEO, which is search engine optimization and blogging and social media management and have kind of touched on every facet of digital mm. brand marketing. Um, and I don't know where my career is taking me anymore. I don't know what the next step would be or what um, the journey is. Um, how much, how much is money a motivator for you when looking for a job or when, when taking stock of your job satisfaction, because there's a lot of jobs out there. A lot of people hate, but like if you're making, you know, yeah. five or 600 bands a year, right. Yeah. You're kind of like, Oh, maybe Absolutely. I don't need it so much. Absolutely. For a large part of it for me. And again, it comes down to privilege of being in a partnership sure. where like there are two incomes. Um, a large part of it for me is lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be able to pick my child up from daycare. I need like the the flexibility to like work hybrid. So I need yeah. to be home sometimes and then in the office sometimes if if necessary. Um, benefits, like you mentioned, very necessary mm -hmm. with a child. I want to make sure that she's covered. She can go to the dentist every totally. six months, for example. Um, yeah, so lifestyle is, I would say, 70%. Okay. Um, and then 30 comes down to income. Yeah. And that's also, again, like you mentioned, we've been in our careers for like 10 years plus now. Yeah. With the, with the experience, you kind of know at least what your baseline should be. Mm -hmm. Um, and it becomes easier to negotiate and like be able to walk away from an offer. If you know, like, okay, this yeah. is like so far away from such a power move, be. by it the really way, is. when it you're really like, is. I really want this gig, but you're not giving me what I want. Yeah. And like, I, I don't want to be resent like, and that's almost how you can, how you can phrase it. Right. If you don't want to like, I don't know, ruin a relationship or something. Although if somebody's lowballing you, they're kind of they're trying to ruin the relationship, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But you go, hey, like I'd love to do this. I just I know what I need. I know what I'm I know what my skills are worth. And I don't want to become resentful in this situation because I'm loving the work, but like I'm feeling like I'm getting shortchanged and yeah. I feel like I could be creating better work when I have better resources somewhere else. I think this is a good segue into our mailbox question. I know we usually have pillow talk before we get into that, but you want to switch it up. I do. Okay. All right. So this one is from, you said we shouldn't give this person's name. Yes. Even though they signed the email. So I'll give the initials DT. You know who you are. It's like in an MSN <laughs> name. Cause we're boomers. You would put someone's initials, right? If you had a crush <laughs> on them. Okay. This person says it's a little different from your usual topics, but I thought maybe it would be fun and different. What is your advice for switching career paths and or getting your first job straight out of college context? I have a master. Whoa. A master's in business administration. Also, that's a flex. Most people just say MBA. I have an <laughs> MBA and management marketing focus. However, I don't like my current job in information tech. It's been hard finding a marketing job wanting to bring me on from limited experience in that specific field. COVID made my internships fall through kind of mm. lame but I'm going to keep trying. Thanks for reading. Sending friendly viewer hugs from Ohio. Shout Big up Ohio. That's where Bella is from. Ohio. Right. Oh, so essentially the question is, what's your advice for switching careers from what you studied to what you'll actually work in after graduation? Yeah. Well, I mean, like I had, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to like necessarily shout him out now if this is something he doesn't want to share, but I have uh, one of my best friends, uh, a, a, my oldest friend, we met in the first grade. He and I got dinner the other night and he said, uh, so we got laid off last year and he's been finding something else to transition to. And he's like, there's, uh, unfortunately I have fewer transferable skills according mm. to managers and other companies than I thought I had. And so that's, uh, it's a bit of a shit sandwich, right? Because you go, I've dedicated so much time to this career. And like, I, I know how to manage relationships, for instance, which is something you can use across any field. Absolutely. And I know how to do this and this. And then they go, yeah, but we need like specialized technical yeah. knowledge yeah. and experience. And unfortunately, a lot of that you need from school and you need from internships and jobs and whatever. Because there are soft skills, right? Sure. Which are important. Like, I, I don't want to say soft skills as if they're, they're lesser skills, but you know, there's like the people stuff. There's the... The um, customer service, yeah. for example, there's like interpersonality and that sort of stuff. Like those are highly important in terms of who you are as a coworker, how you are to work with. But then there are also like the, 
the harder skills that are the, the working skills mm. that are like directly transferable into a specific role. And also I would make the argument that soft skills make up for hard skills or technical experience I agree. in a way that the opposite does yes. not. Yeah. Right. Like you yeah. can think about how many grifters there are out there. Think about all of the like inept managers at your company and the fact that they've been able to just like wheel and deal their ways into those positions. Right. Or like the person, the personality hire, right? Which I feel like has often been me. That's where, literally what you, you know, do. They're like, you're the personality. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but like, I'm fun, right? Like I'm you're cracking jokes. And, like, okay, I'm not doing finger guns, but yikes. I say because I am not the personality you are hire not. at all. All no. like when, when, when I work with you, it's because you are contractually, I obligated. need to be at a place at five Oh one. So this needs to be done at four fifty nine. Mm. Like that's how I work. Yep. Like w here's the work back plan. And it's, I got a lovely compliment from a girl I work with just a couple of days ago. Hey. And she's like, Thank you. um, she so mentioned like, she's like, Dom is incredible at creating work back plans. So like I'm a strategic thinker. I think in like in calendars and I think in spreadsheets and, and in I'm romantic partners. What? You, she saw the potential, right? <laughs> you were like, that's so Raven. And you had a flash, <laughs> flash to the future. And you were like, okay, he doesn't still look like that. Absolutely. So, so for okay. me, like, okay. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was talking about. How are you going to always interrupt and, and view? You got a compliment from a coworker. I already said the compliment. Work, Where was I going with back it? plans. Yeah. You always have a strategy. So I'm not the personality hire. I'm not there. Like, I, yes, I'll you know, have fun with the social committee and I'm on like the BIPOC employee resource group and yeah. like, I'll make sure like Black History Month is acknowledged. I don't care where I'm working. We will acknowledge my month. At the end of the day. Should be a year. Should be all time. But, um, I, sir, I'm an ally. But yeah, I'm not here to like, let's grab drinks. Let's <laughs> wine and wine. No. Did some girl you work with say that? Oh, let's yeah, have wine ago. and wine. Years ago. Let's have a wine and wine. Let's, let's, what is let's, that? let's go out and drink after work and then just complain about our entire work. Day. I'd rather go home. I'd rather go home oh for the place God. I pay to live. I would I'm, rather tie my foreskin into a knot geez. than wine and wine. Oh my God. I mean, I'll do that, but at home with people I, I like and have chosen to be not in my even life. The whining. Like, I mean like the whining, <sighs> Sir, I see where you were trying to I'll go drink and that. dance, I but I don't want to complain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Okay, so to answer our friend's question, shout out to DT, which is um, transferring, uh, transitioning your career from what you've studied into the career that you're aspiring after graduation, um, which is kind of what I touched on about what my career has looked like. So again, studying broadcast with a specialty in television mm -hmm. production um, and ending up in more of the, the digital world. Um, so is it an easier transition because everything in TV was moving online anyways? I know you mentioned that you're currently in uh, IT, I think is what she said. Yeah. She's at Infotech. Um, and she's looking to work in marketing. marketing. Um, so some advice that I'd give as someone who's currently working in marketing. Um, everybody's going to tell you, you know, reach out on LinkedIn. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I get a lot of like LinkedIn messages from LinkedIn's people and I'm just like, I like LinkedIn in terms of like finding people like I, I'm big on career crushes. I'm a millennial at the end of the day. I grew up in the lean in era and that was the first book I read after graduation. Like I'm from that generation. Um, so I like it in terms of like finding motivation, finding people to follow. Um, and so I would use that as your first step in terms of like identifying what you would like your career to look like. Um but the step after that, I think, is beyond just like sending an, a LinkedIn DM that is like like the, the generic "Hi, first name." I really enjoyed insert mm. here. Like, try to build a genuine relationship, and 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 that is in the same way that you would build a genuine relationship with like people you follow online. Yeah. Like, if I like emailing me, exactly. You know what I mean, exactly. So it wasn't it wasn't specifically like. Hey, you mentioned X, so I'm wondering if you'd like to grab coffee. Nobody wants to grab coffee. Anybody got time for coffee? Or money. Okay. Like, people, especially, like, January, it's a busy-ass time. You're back to work. Like, build genuine relationships. Like, hey, like, reaching out to someone in your field, for example, with this question. I, I received that question from someone looking to work in my role. Mm -hmm. 
I, I would take the time to answer that question and give like my honest feedback on yeah. like, how I got into my specific position. I think people really appreciate transparency and honesty mm. um, and authenticity, which is not something you get very often on LinkedIn specifically. Yeah. Where everyone's like, I'm so happy that every part of my life has synergy. My job yeah. is my entire personality. I love my team. Check out my portfolio here. <sighs> um, but LinkedIn is, is, at the end of the day, it is a powerful network. Like, you know, try to post on it every day. I'm so, like, at least a couple of times a week. Like, get your stuff out there. And even if your stuff is just, like, um, not even real, like, published work yet, but it's, like, concepts that you have or opinions that you have on work out there, I think people would be really interested. Like, just keep sharing. Build your your network and your portfolio as well and share that with the people um, through LinkedIn. I don't think you should necessarily email that to, to a complete stranger who doesn't have time. Um, but, like, build up your brand that way. Also, here's some memes I thought you'd enjoy. <laughs> I mean, it's not that you're transitioning your career. You work in radio and you also work as like the I'm near full-time creator at this sure. time. Like you have two full-time jobs yeah. almost. And parenting and, and also all the things, yes. Taking care of Brandon Blackwood. I got you. What? I got you. <laughs> do you have any advice? Let what just, are you looking just, for? You know what I'm looking for. <laughs> and you're probably gonna give it to me too. The thinking is so intentional. If you like your current company, I'm sure they have a marketing division. Mm, that's true. Make some friends there. Talk to management there. It's ask also the like shadow. It, ask the shadow, but it's also like annoying waiting for a posting to come up at your company specifically. Just apply for just apply for marketing jobs. I'm sure you've got a portfolio from like you said. I think she said she had an MBA mm -hmm. and like with a focus on marketing. Some projects she did there. Um, when you get those interviews and they have questions again, it comes back to soft skills. Just bullshit your way through it. Oh my god. No. Like, have a conversation. I mean, obviously, it's an interview. You're having a conversation. Demonstrate how you understand these concepts. Also, maybe some spec work. Like, just because you don't work for uh, the marketing department at McDonald's doesn't mean you can't exactly. come up with like a concept. Exactly, concepts. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. And then, like, when you're applying for jobs and they want to see a portfolio, submit some of your spec work. And also, mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe don't use McDonald's. Maybe use, like, smaller brands that don't have such a big footprint. Because honestly, I don't think a lot of people are like checking sources. No, How many like, people lie on their resumes? There's nothing wrong with submitting your concepts. Sure. Like I, I actually appreciate that when I see that on an application. So people saying like, if I worked for your company, here's what I would have done. Like I think that's super dope and it shows your creative process and it shows um, your journey as well. I'll, I'll say this. I had someone watermark. who worked. Oh, yeah. Like watermark <laughs> your stuff for sure. Yoink. <laughs> um, we had someone who worked. Um, within my company, and I say my company, the company that I work for, um, in a different department, and she was looking to transition into the marketing department. And so what she said, because we didn't have any openings at the time, so she reached out to me personally, and she's like, hey, like, here's my background. I don't have specific skills within this, but I would mm -hmm. love to shadow you. I'd love to, like, support in any way and, like, on any project. Um, I've received my manager's permission to do so, mm -hmm. um, as long as it doesn't get in the way of my day-to-day -day work. For sure. Like, let me know if there are any opportunities. And so I ended up, like, bringing her to, like, she would support in events that we'd host off-site. She would support in, like, the inbox. So she started to understand, yeah. um, you know, the, the specific day-to-day -day that goes on within my role. Mm -hmm. And then so when we were looking for a third person, she was the first person that I thought of. Totally. Because so you already I have a relationship. Um, you like this person. Mm -hmm. And they've proven themselves to be competent. And again, like, I didn't know her because I know it's hard. Like, if you don't know the person across the hall, sure. maybe you don't have that culture in your office. It's it's weird to, like, reach out to somebody and be like, hey, I'm looking for a position. But, like, I appreciated the authenticity of her saying, like, I don't have this yet. I'm looking to gain this. Can I provide this for you mm -hmm. um, to, to, to gain more more knowledge there? 100%. So good luck. And let us, let us know an update when it's available. All right, Pillow Talk, you want to handle this one? Is it ready on your phone? Because yeah. I'll just grab it off of yours. Don't scroll. Do not open the private browser. <laughs> That's my business. Okay, we're getting into Pillow Talk where we have a little bit more intimate conversation. I feel like the entire conversation has been intimate. I'm but hoping it's a little more intimate than just conversation, but I don't know. If we win the lottery tomorrow. See ya. Wow. A lot of couples actually get divorced after winning the lottery. Why? They're both just because they're both like, oh, I just want to like 
I think I can do better and I have a bunch of money and I can get someone hotter than you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you were ready with that answer, yeah. unfortunately. No, we can't get okay. anyone. <laughs> who, who else out there is hotter, right? Come on. Are you asking for applicants? No. What's the first indulgent, extravagant thing you'd want to do for both of us? Two-week vacation. That's extravagant? Yeah, I feel like a three-week vacation at that point, you're like, now we got to bring the kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> now we got to bring Nia. Two weeks? My mom will watch Nia for two weeks, right? Your mom will take no, a couple days. Your no. sister will take a couple days. Yeah, like somewhere where, um, like I've got, a, I've got a potential trip coming up, a business trip, and it's at like a really nice resort. And I was looking at the, this is how you know it's expensive, by the way. When you look at the spa and they call it a menu, a menu of services instead of just like price list. That's Dude, not unusual. A 50-minute massage, 250 U.S. What? That's, that's very That's like expensive. $340 Canadian for an hour wow, massage. Wow, wow. And then they go, tax included. I would hope so. Yeah. And gratuity. Yeah, I'd hope so too. Who's calling me? Oh, the laundry people. I was hoping it was the babysitter. I'll call them back. Um, the babysitter texted me. The 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 two week vacation would be at somewhere like stupid expensive, stupid nice. Okay. And I'm just like, here's the credit card, which I mean, every hotel takes one. It's not like, hey, let's try something new. Yeah. Take this. <laughs> They're like, we Start need that anyway. Tab. I'd like, here's a second credit card when that one gets maxed out. And I'm I don't care what I don't care what anything costs if I won the lottery. I'm getting the massages. I'm getting like the you fancy dinners. Okay, you've won twenty million dollars. Okay, all right. Two okay. weeks to like yeah, whatever yeah. you want to do. I'm getting room service. So vacation. Yeah. Because you're extravagant. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Oh cool. my goodness. And then like the debt or whatever. So <laughs> after Mexico, two yeah. cards. Yeah. I am buying us property mm. with like a private road, so people can't just show up. People can't just come interrupt In our peace. You want to live in the boonies. Uh, like, not even, like, far outside of, like, the city, but, like, far enough that you need to enter a private road. There is, like, there's a guard. There's, like, are you on the list? They don't know you're arriving today. I don't know why you're here. Please turn around. With like the, the creepy no, gates? Okay? Like, no, we will not be contacting them because they would let us know if you were coming today. Sure. So you could, you're you not could on the list. Bus a Yui around here. Exactly. And you know who could be security? You know who could be our bouncer? Camille, Camille. Wilson. That was episode 11 of Flang House. Thank you for being here. You are, you're just, you're the best, man. I love you. You're my road dog. I love you too. Truly. Yeah. Don't call me your dog. Road dog. Call me, call me something sexier. I I promised I wouldn't, like, there was a little bit of cussing, but, like, I'm trying not to, like, have heavy cusses on I don't on think here. there was cussing, was there? I said the S word. So, uh, I'm just going to think, I, I'm thinking of a really dirty name for you right now. You'll Excuse like. Excuse me, and it's you'll, a bad word? No, no, it's like, you'll like it, but it's like explicit, so. Okay. Comment below. Uh, I'll, I'll approve the comments or unhide them or whatever. I don't, <laughs> I don't care what they say. Just, you know. What? So, that's what me. I'm actually interested in, in the comment section, is letting us know, like, what your money matters look like with, whether that's with your partner, like, if you've had any cash money discussions that you've had to have um or like with your best friend for example like what's been your money journey uh share that with us because i'm super interested. i'm looking to start my journey i'm looking <laughs> i'm looking to finding some money i'm looking i'm looking forward to being written into somebody's will hopefully amazing i need to i need to like go make friends at a retirement home or something <laughs> you know just go to the room. Uh, give me the give me a list of patients with the worst eyesight. Oh and I'll my be like, goodness! No, Grandma, it's me. Your your granddaughter Jessica. So, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>